Hey everyone, welcome to Freedom Ranch Homestead. I'm Chuck and this is my beautiful wife, Brooke. Hello, welcome. What I want to do is explain to you a little bit about what this video is going to entail. Chuck and I are starting the chinking process today on our log home. And so we thought we would give a little instructional video on how you do the chinking process from what we have learned through our mistakes and our successes. So that's what this video is about. I promise coming up next video will be about all the progress that has been happening on the log home because there has been a lot going on. And we also have some new additions to the ranch, which will be coming out in another video soon after that. Yep. So we hope you enjoy the video and have a phenomenal day. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, golden. I'll follow them. Golden, 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 golden things. A few weeks ago, Brooke put out a video on, uh, I think it was titled, Let the Chinking Begin, where she's taking the lead on starting the chinking process on the log home. And, uh, and, and it starts with step one being the wire mesh, installation of the wire mesh. And we had a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. um, this whole process, like everything we're doing here, is, is about learning. Yes. And uh, we, we kind of do and then learn from our mistakes and then get better and better. And by now, by the end, I think, you know, we're actually doing pretty well on the, the wire mesh process. Yeah. So we're almost done with that. Just a, a few more uh, log sections to go. Yes. And we'll be finished. Yeah. I mean, we really started out, it was kind of a guessing game on how to do that. We had gotten advice from a few different people yeah. and um, and kind of put that advice to our own use and, and figured out what worked best for us. And so we're going to give you a little demonstration of that, of the exact thing that we have figured out to be the most efficient and right. solid way to install that mesh. Actually came up with some, some a little bit of innovation from our side, at yeah. least from our perspective. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll call it innovation. I know, somebody else may have thought of it as <laughs> right. well, but yeah. we're, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna own it. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're proud yeah. of the work that we've done exactly. so far. <laughs> we're, we're, we're proud of getting smarter, so. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna give you a little demonstration on how the mesh goes, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how we are going to make sure that the logs stay nice and healthy and don't get cracked and um, worn looking over the years. There was another video that um, where we found the initial treatment called rugged wood treatment. Mm -hmm. We put that on as both a protectant and sort of a colorizer of the wood. So it takes the wood and turns it into this, this gray color. Yeah. And, uh, and it's more uniform when we put that on. So that was step one. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had done that when the log cabin was first built on the other piece right. of property. And so it was able to sit in the sun and darken a little bit and get a little bit more color from that. And we did it on, on the exterior portion of Grumpy's Garage as well. Correct. And it turned really dark and beautiful. Yeah. We loved the way it looked. So yep. that's why we decided to do it on the cabin as well. And then we are going to also show the process of beginning chinking. And we're actually, we've gotten two samples of colors of the cement that we might want to use. Right. And so we're going to use this log once it has been treated, the wire mesh put in, and we'll put in some chinking and kind of experiment a little bit with that as well and see what color we want to use for the whole cabin. Yep. Hope you'll enjoy and learn a few things as we did. And uh, we'll tell you about some of the, the mistakes we made along yeah. the way maybe and, yeah. and uh, some of the process improvements we made as well. Yeah, definitely. So this is diamond mesh and this was an integral part of doing a chinking project because when you go to put the chinking in, you have to have something for it to bind with on the backside. The chinking being the cement material we're gonna put into into these gaps here that's where the chinking goes so <clears throat> we take this diamond mesh and we cut strips of it and we place it in there and fix it into the logs top and bottom and make it very rigid then we'll have a nice backing to spread the cement mix against for the chinking so here i'm going to use a partial sheet that we've already been using on the cabin and I'm just going to measure, just, uh, measure out a small area here. And we found it was a very helpful tip was to actually bend it over at a 90 degree angle along here or close to 90. It doesn't have to be exactly that. 
but it'll make a lot of difference when we go to put the screws in to the top and fix it into the top of the log, of the upper log. So now we've bent it, okay? Then we take it out of here, we flip it over, we place it into here. So then you hold it right there. Now we'll screw some screws in and then we'll come back and we'll cut it. So one of the other um, lessons we learned was to make sure we put a washer on this and that'll keep it from going through the diamond mesh. It'll hold better. And so I've already done that on this one. I'm gonna pop this guy in right here. And we wanna set that back in a, a, maybe a, up to an inch back. And the reason we're doing that, and I'm gonna balance this out first, is we're creating a drip edge. And what a drip edge is, is when the water comes down here, it tends to hang on through, uh, I think it's the covalent bonding process, if I remember right, <laughs> from high school chemistry. And it drips down, and, and because we're gonna shape the chinking back, slope it back this way, it will hit the chinking, roll off, and go on down the side of the next log, and repeat the process all the way down the building. There. Okay. okay. <clears throat> now we've got it fixed on both ends. I can go through here and just tack it up every few inches along this, this edge and get these back. <clears throat> if you want this nice and stiff, you have, basically I just test it as I go along and I feel where it's nice and firm. If it gets soft, then I'll add another screw, you know, and basically it's just so you can push back against that and if the concrete um, or the log starts shrinking, it's got a nice solid foundation to, uh, to blend into. This is another device. Yes. And this is an awesome little cutting machine that we add to our drill. So they do make a whole unit like this now, but um, this has been added as a, uh, instead of having to get a whole new He's tool, mm -hmm. we, um, we decided that we would use this mm -hmm. instead. There we go. Wow, that worked like butter for you. Cut like butter. <laughs> Usually is not the case. Well, <laughs> Only when he does it does it cut like butter. When yeah, I do it, it it's works like good for me because um, you got the muscles. I got a little more beef, beef behind it, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. But good, good. Yeah, look good. at that. That's perfect. So the next part is stapling, and we can sta We found we could staple the bottom. We didn't need to screw that. And there's a couple of advantages. A, it's really fast. B, you don't have these screw heads sticking out like you would up in top. And as you're trying to put the, the cement, this is a very thin part of the cement. It's thick in the back, thin on the front. You don't want a, a, a bolt head or a screw head sticking through the concrete. It would kind of look kind of weird. Mm -hmm. so, um, so this has been a nice little uh, thing that we kind of decided would be the process that worked best for us. And <clears throat> you can just, if, you, if I can learn to hit it, which I'm not all that great at sometimes, but you can just go right down staple you want to push this in just enough so that when your concrete is on top of this and smooth feathered out it's, the wire mesh is not going to stick out so you want to so sometimes you push this back a little bit along the contour of the wood so that it's set back just a little bit So now that Chuck has demonstrated how to put in the wire mesh, which you did a very good job, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to show a little bit about what goes into the mixture that we're going to be putting onto the wood. So since we have already placed this on, we're going to now do the next step, which is apply a mixture of the following. Right, and that is boiled linseed oil and mineral spirits mixed with uh, paraffin wax. Mm -hmm. Oil and the wax in combination will add additional protection. The mineral spirits basically just carries the, the mixture and helps it soak into the wood and then it'll evaporate. So we learned this from a gentleman on Handmade House. Um, the combination is a gallon 
of the mineral spirits. And then depending on the darkness that you want of the wood, you would add either a cup up to a pint of the linseed oil. So the more you add, the darker the wood will become. And then you only add, I believe this box comes with four sticks of the wax. You slowly melt this and then add it into the mixture. And we'll show that once we get the mixture started up. And so yes, this adds an extra layer. Water will bead up on this rather than being soaked in. This helps to keep the moisture from going into the log and keeping the helps uh, keep the longevity of the logs. So we're gonna mix it up. We're gonna test it out. We're gonna first start with mixing only a cup of the linseed oil and just test and see what the darkness will be on one log. And then we'll go a little bit darker on the other log. And then tomorrow we'll come back and take a look and see which one we like the most. Right? Yep. To begin, you're going to start your water boiling for melting the wax. And then you want to add either a used can, or in my case, I'm using a used dog dish that has been cleaned and I don't need anymore. And I'm going to place that in there. And, this, and then I'm going to go ahead and place the wax in it. And then as it melts, I'll kind of move it around and stir it to get it um, so that it does not burn. So we just got to wait for it to get hot now. Okay, it has completed the melting process. So now I'm gonna carefully take it out of the big pot. I'm afraid I don't drop it. And then I'm gonna bring it outside so that we can mix it with the rest of the goodies. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is pour in the mineral spirits. Really exciting watching a whole gallon. <laughs> okay, so full gallon in. Next. Next. I want to use it all up. Okay. Then we're going to put in one cup. One cup to begin with. Of boiled linseed oil. How much is in a cup? Eight ounces. Eight maybe. ounces. Good answer. Pour it in. Fabulous, and then you stir it really well. Okay, so now we're gonna add the, the wax that Brooke melted. Put that in, and then I'm gonna stir it up very quickly because it coagulates fast. Mm -hmm. well, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. I didn't expect that. So, I don't know. I know, it, that's really interesting. I think it would have dissolved in there. Something tells me we're going to have little chunks of wax. I know. That's really strange. <clears throat> Maybe we should have watched his video all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> okay, should we try applying it and see? Yep. So last night when Chuck and I made the mixture to put on the logs, um, when we added in the beeswax, it um, coagulated and kind of got really chunky. And so we weren't sure what was going on. And we went back and we found out that what we needed to really do is to make sure that the um, linseed oil and the mineral um, spirits were kind of room temperature. They had been sitting out there a little bit chilly. And then also that we poured the wax in immediately after it melted when it was really hot and then stirred it really well. So here it is all mixed up. There's still kind of little chunks of the wax, but I find that by the time you roll it on, it, um, it pretty much melts down. So it works very well. There we go. Halfway. Okay. So soaking in really nicely. Good. That's, that's the most important part is getting yeah. it in. So it looks really dark to begin with, but once it dries, it will not be as dark. Right. So we want to compare what it looks like with it tomorrow mm -hmm. and without it on the left-hand side. Okay, so let's add more of the linseed oil to do the bottom one. Okay. So make it a little bit darker mix. All right. So we're going to add another eight ounces, correct, to make a pint. Okay. So going on the bottom now. Okay, so we've done the top and the bottom. 
And now we're just gonna wait and see how they dry and look in the morning and then make our decision on what we're gonna put on the cabin and then I can start putting it on tomorrow morning. Yep. Yay. Now on to chinking. Oh, fun stuff. So we're just cutting the mix down because we don't need the huge, the full batch tonight. We're just doing a little test. So um, easy math, just cut it down. We cut it in, in a quarter from the ratio of, um, I think it was, how much was it? <laughs> I'll have to look it up again. I know it was 84 quarts of water. No. Okay. So. So we have... <laughs> 12 ounces of sand to 84, no, that's no 12 quarts of sand to 84 ounces of water to uh, four quarts of cement is the mixture. Okay, but we're going to cut So we're cutting it down quarter. by a quarter, yes. So that means that we are going with... 21 ounces of water, one quart of cement. And four, and four. no, three. Three. Three quarts of sand. Yes. Okay. Boom. Boom. So we've already got two quarts in here of sand. Three. I already put Oh, you already put the third one in. Okay. So now let's spread it out nicely because we're going to have to mix the water in here. So we got to go get the water. Okay. So it's 21 ounces, which is two and a half cups. So I want to be just slightly over. You want to add the water before the cement, right? Yes. So we're going to add the water. Because the cement absorbs the water faster than the sand. sand. Okay, okay, there's our water. Now you want to take the hoe, mix it, baby. All right. Show us your mixing skills. Oh, yeah. That's right. You show that sand to the boss, baby. I always knew I had a tail. <laughs> wow. It doesn't seem like a whole lot of water. No, you want it kind of sticky. Fine. This will be right. But we'll see. I mean, we're, we're here to learn. So we got a, a number of different styles of trowels and things because we didn't really know exactly what's going to work for us best. Um, so we just picked up a few of them. But main thing is to mix this up to make sure there's no dry sand, not dry spots in there. We've done that. Just like a sous chef. <laughs> So now we're getting the cement and we need one quart. I broke the bag dropping here. Ruh -roh. This, this is the one that's gonna have a little more of a yellowish greenish tint to it. Um, the other one's a little more gray. This one's a little more yellowish. More yellowish. It definitely absorbs moisture quickly. Yeah. Now this we have to get this up nice. Uh oh, I think the price tag just came out. <laughs> that looks good. Yeah, good. Woohoo! So, so, just a know. reminder, folks, we have never done this before. So, hey, Gabe. Gabe has come to help us. Right. You're about to embark on a chinking adventure. Aren't you excited? Sand. Sand and cement. All right, I'm gonna call that good. Okay, we're gonna try and slop it on. So this has a color that you can put colors in. It is kind of cool. I do like it. Yep. So now we gotta transition here. Hmm. Nice butt. It looks a little dry. You need more wetness in it. Yeah, that's for messy, babe. Yep. Need a little more water. Okay. Yeah. Give you a little drippage. Okay. So we're gonna add four more ounces of water. Ready? Well, that might be too much. I know. Just mix it around, you'll be fine. A little goopier this time. All right. Too wet, I guess. So I went from too dry to too wet. Oh, oh my gosh, this is gonna make a mess of our deck. 
Yeah, probably gonna have to plastic down because it'll concrete stain the deck. Yeah, she'll never get it out. Okay, so now we're mixing up another batch of the other color. This time we're putting in 23 ounces of water. So the yeah. last, the other one we put in 25 ounces of water. So we're trying to see if a little less water makes it a little less runny. Oh my God, I'm looking at that house. And I'm thinking each one of those little, what? little parts needs all of the cement. Okay. <laughs> I'm just starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed is all. Like everything, <laughs> you always start out overwhelmed and you figure out, I can do this. <laughs> and then my body screams, no, I can't. <laughs> I think I went a little bit long on the cement here. You messing up our measurements, mm -hmm. mister. I think I, I think I like this color a little better. You don't know until it does. I know. You said don't. That's why I want to get it done tonight. So see it in the morning. Know which to order. And we'll get a feel for the texture. That's not yeah. going to be that big of a deal. Once you get kind of, all right, this is what works. This yep. is too wet. Add wet. Yeah, some more sand or whatever. That part will get figured out. Kind of see where he's talking about that little squirter thing to push it in there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I got throw it in. There. Wow, that looks great, babe. This looks too great of me. <laughs> You're better see. at this than I am. So. Really? Yeah. And you're also going to want to come back and oil stain both these so you get the. Oh yeah. <laughs> no clue what I'm doing here. Yeah, that's really pitiful. <laughs> How did they get it up in there? I think I go if I go backwards, that helps. Scoop it onto the back of the thing like this, and then pack it in there. in, spread it out, baby. So that's right and then come back and then come down yeah because it's easy to add on to the bottom portion. yeah Ooh, it looks so pretty from the back side <laughs> that'd be a hot mess that's where all the insulation goes okay i think that's good for now i don't know i'm voting for this color <clears throat> what do you think friends okay so let's Tell them what the colors are. So the first one we did is that color is limestone. Okay. And then the mm. second color that we did, what's that? Mm. This one is lime putty. Putty. Limestone. Limestone. <clears throat> lime and, putty. And I vote lime putty. And this one is, yep. We'll see who the winner lime. is. Looking pretty. Looking like lime putty. Yeah, I wouldn't like it if it's uh, that greenish look. No, I don't like but. the green. Well, excellent. I think we're, uh, we call that a wrap. There's our test environment. I'm really glad that we did a test. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Good call. Because if we were doing all these experiments on the cabin, we'd yeah. be like, okay, we're going <laughs> to live with this mistake forever. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll take some of these mistakes, <laughs> put them to bed, not repeat them. Yep. And uh, we'll be good to go. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Toodles. Okay. It's the next morning and you can see 
the difference in the stain. So this top one here was the one cup of the um, linseed oil and the bottom was two cups or one pint. And then we have our chinking and I definitely think this puppy's the winner. That's way too green. So I just gotta talk to Chuck, see which mixture he thinks is gonna be good and then I am gonna get to work along with Dan and Corbin.